Today I wanted to discuss what I consider to be one of the best teams in Genshin Impact. There are teams within the game that work based on broken units or ridiculous scaling, and those are also great. This team offers a synergistic rotation that's something I believe to be the most important thing in this game. This team feels good to play against longer fights, when I want to zigzag between enemy groups, and I feel confident in almost all Abyss content either using this specific team or every unit in it being split between the two. This team hasn't failed me despite some of the units accomplishing this at level 60, and today we are talking about Razor, Jin-Q, Chi-Chi, and Fischl. And as we talk through this, I always reference my units in the order that they are in my team because I start the rotation backwards. My fourth slot always goes first, and my first slot always goes last. There are a few times I break these rules, like when I hit two instead of one. Liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing does help my small channel grow, and I just want to thank you for showing your support in these ways. Consider subscribing for more content on builds and other ways to get the most out of your experiences in games like Genshin Impact. As you can see in my videos, I respond to everyone, and I also stream on Twitch and YouTube if you ever want to come say hi and ask any questions about games. I'd love to help out in any way I can. Let's go ahead and get started. If you're looking for a specific piece in this video, I'll go ahead and put the chapters in the description for you to skip around as you please. But by sticking around, I will be adding in some fun facts and discoveries I've made from using this team, from the experience that I've had with it, that I feel are worth a mention. Now starting with Fischl, Fischl's skill is 10 seconds, but can go up to 12 seconds on her C6. Fischl's burst also puts Oz on the field the same way that her skill does. C6 Fischl creates electro damage for every unit on the field at all times. Her skill has the shortest duration, but double electro team and a C6-ing her help offset this. One notable complement that Fischl has with this team is with Gene Q using his skill and burst to shield the unit with Hydro, but also causes wet on the enemies that touches the active unit, which causes reactions with Oz, which procs her fourth ascension skill, Lightning Smite, which causes an electro-related reaction when Oz is on the field. The opponent is struck with electro damage equal to 80% of Fischl's attack. This is really nice because Jin-Q actually attacks very quickly, so if you have a shield out and then you start attacking a few times, you'll actually put off quite a bit of damage with this. Now with Jin-Q, his skill is 15 seconds long where he puts a rotating shield around the unit, and then his burst also creates the same shield against him for 15 seconds. Kind of noticing a pattern with that. Jin-Q's skill may not do damage, but it causes the wet effect when you touch an enemy while it is active, which is perfect for a melee unit that gets really close to all enemies that it hits. Plus, damage mitigation with Chi-Chi's heals works really, really well together, and when the sword breaks, they also heal the active unit. And another solid note is that his burst deals damage on the normal attack for the 15 seconds, which works extremely well with Razor, who increases his attack speed in his burst form for his normal attack. Chi-Chi is an incredible cryo healer, but she is definitely not free to play friendly, so for this I do want to just note that she is interchangeable for Diona, but I think that her kit is superior because she complements the rotation timing better than Diona can. Now if you do manage to just get Diona, then what I would recommend doing is trying to build her around energy recharge for her burst ability just because it does proc the cryo damage every 2 seconds within an AoE. Now talking about Chi-Chi's kit, her skill and her burst both last 15 seconds long. Her skill creates an orb that rotates around her, which consistently reapplies cryo to the enemies that you're attacking, and her burst also creates an AoE zone that also deals cryo damage for 15 seconds, including a healing mechanic within both of them. I'd say that she's an incredible unit, and not only can she help rocking superconduct, but she can also freeze the unit as well as heal your team. And then we have Razor, which Razor is actually my favorite unit in the game just because he's so unique in a lot of ways. Razor's skill is instant. He creates sigils that have 18 second durations that resets when you add another, which this is part of his energy recharge mechanic. So for every sigil, he gets 20% energy recharge, so up to three, so up to 60%. And then you can actually use his hold mechanic to absorb those three orbs and get a specific amount of energy back to himself. And then Razor's Burst is 15 seconds long, where he wolfs out, increases his attack speed during the duration, and then as he does his normal attack, the wolf does damage to a percentage of what his attack is for that period of time as electro damage. So he's able to do normal physical damage and electro damage at the same time. Now Razor is selfish and easy to burst with energy recharge being built into him, and then pairing him with Fischl makes his burst almost always available on rotation. His burst is where he shines as it increases his normal attack speed, which right now I have it up to rank 10, which is a 40% increase to his attack speed, which I believe is the maximum it can be and does normal damage while his inner Inuyasha does 43.2% of his attack damage right now as Electro, which does pretty solid damage, and it continues to proc the Electro element to do reactions. Now let's go ahead and talk about the weapons really quick. Razor is using the Prototype Aminus, Jin-Q is using the Sacrificial Sword, and Chi-Chi is using Skyward Blade. And then I have Fischl equipped with the Stringless Bow. 
Now the sacrificial sword on Jinkyu or Chi Chi, doesn't really matter which, increases the flexibility at the expense of the damage and healing output. I currently use it on them because of the low resources I have and focusing on my second team, but as I continue to build an arsenal, it adds potential to use more attack focused weapons instead of using sacrificial. It is a fantastic hand-me-down item, so you can use this later for your second team or whatever team you want to mess around with. Flexibility allows other options like Flute, Lion's Roar, Prototype to be free-to-play options for those that don't have the 5-star weapons that I'm using in this rotation. And then Fischl's kind of weird with other weapons in the lineup. Stringless is the only one that really does anything for her since I only use her for her skill and burst. She's also good to use for ranged enemies like Hydro Elites, Stupid Birds. Rust is also fine. Free-to-play option would be Slingshot. And then Razor is free-to-play friendly, so nobody should have any issues with this. And then for the artifact sets, I'm only going to speak to the Sands, the Goblet, and the Circlet just because they're the only custom ones that you need. But for Razor, I have on a Gladiator 4 piece, which he has attack, physical damage, and crit. And for crit, it's either crit rate or crit damage, depending on how much crit rate you have. I usually use the base as 25% needed in order for it to really matter. For Jin Q, I have Noblesse 4 piece, which is energy recharge, hydro damage, and then attack percent. And for Chi Chi, as a healer, she prefers Maidens, but I have attack, attack, and healing. And then Fischl has Thundering Fury, which includes energy recharge, electro damage, and attack percentage. Now these are the preferred options for these sets that I'm aiming for, but right now I do not have it perfected just because I have not run artifact dungeons long enough, but this is what I'm going after. And that is just to try and fill certain little minimal gaps within this team. Now official skill doesn't hit cooldown until the 10 seconds are over with Oz on the field. So it actually has 22 seconds from the time that it is used. For Thundering Fury's 4 set passive works while Razor's on the field, which makes it incredible for this team. Chi Chi's Maiden set helps with the heals, and Jin Q's burst is frequently used if you build him with at least 180 energy recharge and or with Sacrificial Sword to guarantee it on rotation, which procs the 4 piece attack buff for 12 seconds right before you switch to Razor, who has the 4 piece Glad, which has attack plus 18% and normal attack damage increase by 35%, which is incredible for burst damage potential for him. So that's kind of how these artifacts play together to help this team. Now that we've talked about what this team can do, some of the challenges and opportunities that I've thought through with this over time is that cryo enemies can be tough without the pyro element, but thankfully because of how much normal attack damage Razor does, it is countered a lot faster than with other comps that have a weakness to something. And also with Cryo, if you use Gene Q's skill rotation, it causes him to freeze himself mid kick, which leaves him pretty vulnerable to just basically being one hit. He is level 60 right now. Some of the other fun facts or discoveries that I've made that I said that it would be worth mentioning here is that I always thought Animo was a necessary component of a team, but I felt like with this team, the slot potential is better utilized by the ones I mentioned here, primarily because of everything being built around enhancing Razor's time on the field, which really just goes to complement his physical damage and then also causing reactions to pop off, which isn't specific to any one element. An added perk to Razor's Burst is that if you don't use the full 15 seconds of the form, it can reserve up to 10 energy, which doesn't sound like much, but since you can build energy while in his wolf form, this can sometimes cap out the rest of his energy meter. So if I finish a battle early, so I swap out of his form to capitalize on this. Rain is common, which causes wet, which electro charge is a lot more common to happen. So having that double electro resonance really helps with the energy recharge, even when you're not trying to. The double electro resonance buff helps reduce the energy recharge needs early in the game with artifacts to maintain set bonuses that you're aiming. This allows you to focus energy recharge on the other two units first instead. So for instance, I actually don't have Fischl on energy recharge right now and it works just fine. Inability effects like stupid bubbles from mages, Fischl's burst is actually immune to it if you're flying through it, which is really nice, and it will actually burst the bubble still, so it's not going to continue following you around. When Jin Q has his skill and his burst ready, you can actually do a skill animation cancel into his burst, which works amazingly because it will reset his burst bar by the time you absorb the orbs. One talent that is worth mention is Razor's sprint stamina consumption being 20% less, which is very helpful for animation canceling. For every five times you do an animation cancel and dash forward, you basically get one free. And then another talent is Chi Chi being able to see all of Liyue resources on the minimap. During the duration of Jin Q's skill and burst, for 15 seconds, it changes the unit element to wet, which helps on the abyss floors that apply a specific element effect, which brings me to Razor's burst form. It actually changes his element to Electro, which helps on abyss floors that apply a specific element effect. I haven't seen this posted anywhere, so I figured it's worth noting. I've tested this several times in the abyss and it works really well. I believe it has to do something with his higher Electro resistance effect in the burst that causes this, but it wipes the pyro effect on floor 10 during the burst phase. 
Some constellations worth noting on this, I'll just only focus on the more free to play friendly ones, is that C2 Jing Q has some pretty overpowered potential. And then C1 and C6 Fischl has some overpowered potential. And then Razor is unique in the sense that he has four very unique abilities with crit rate, damage, defense breaking, and electro damage happening every 10 seconds. So C1, C2, C4, and C6 for him actually have some very good overpowered potential. Razor, Jing Q, Chi Chi, and Fischl are by far my favorite team, and they work really well. I want to give my props to my viewers for mentioning Jing Q and recommending that I test him out. And although I was hesitant, it helped me find my favorite team thus far. I hope you enjoyed this team build breakdown and why I chose the things I did. If you do want to know about my second team that I'm working on, I just confirmed the units that I'm going to be building, but I am excited because the interchangeability it has with the units on this team works extremely well too, making it very useful for mix and matching during Abyss Trials when you have to split your strongest team members up, so consider subscribing if you like videos that cover in-depth thought processes into these teams. And comment if you believe you have a better idea. I'm super open to feedback on trying new things and showcasing what I think is worth investing your resources and time into. And again, thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing my channel so that it can continue to grow. Stay tuned for more content like this on Genshin Impact and other games, and I hope that you have the most amazing experience and luck with this game, and I will see you in the next one.